members and welcome back. My name is Lona Kiema, the Food and Beverage Manager. We are on our episode six, Time Does Fly. We are now moving and learning new things, learning different regions and different grapes. Today again with us, we have our wine ambassador, Mukami. Mukami Karibu Sana. It's really nice to have you. We are learning and I believe also the current nights are learning something new. So today, Mukami is taking us through the South African wines. Stay put, please enjoy it, and let's have fun as we, we learn about wines. Thank you very much, and Karibu Mukami. Thank you, Lona, for that amazing introduction to this week's Karen Wine Hour. I'm super excited because we've got like a quintessentially South African flight before us this week. We have an MCC from Graham Beck and a Pinotage. This week, I can just truly say, is South African Wine Tasting Week. Because these two wines, these two wine styles, really represent the, con the country's background in winemaking. Pinotage is, you know, born and bred in South Africa. It came out of Stellenbosch, and its premium wine-growing region is Stellenbosch, which is where this wine comes from. And MCC is a sparkling wine, that, a sparkling wine style that's made in South Africa by South Africans and it's it's just it really represents you know sparkling wine from the continent so I'm overjoyed that we get to try South Africa's lovely wine babies this week. Now we're going to start with the Pinot Charge then go into the, the MCC and I would like to do it this way because Pinot Charge has a lot more background and history to it and I really want to spend time unpacking, you know, what is Pinot Tart, where did it come from, why does it matter, and why we should celebrate it before we get into the sparkling wine. Because more often than not, I meet people who have tried an MCC in one form or another, or a sparkling wine, and they seem to understand the background of that winemaking style. But Pinot Tart, I think, needs to be celebrated and brought to the forefront more than it already is. So. This, the Pinot Tarte we're having this week is from Cannon Corp State. Cannon Corp is a very well-renowned and internationally recognized winemaking estate in Stellenbosch. And I, I like the name Cannon Corp. So Cannon, the first five letters, K-A-N-O-N is like, you know, like a war cannon. And Cop Cop is hell. So if you, like when I spent time researching the wine, the winery and its history, Cannon Corp means like, um, a cannon that was blasted on top of a hill to let the settlement around know that they, their ships coming in from the bay. So farmers would take their produce, would start walking a very long distance to the ocean to sell what they have to oncoming crew and passengers. Now, why does that matter for the winemaking? And why is Cannon Corp's Pinotage so internationally renowned? Let's take it back to 1925 when Pinotage was created in the Stellenbosch Laboratory. So Pinotage is a blend of two grapes. It is Pinot Noir and Hermitage stroke sin salt. Um, so Pinot, the first, like Pinot is, represents the Pinot, Pinot Noir, and then Taj represents the Hermitage grape. Hermitage and sin salt are the same thing. It just happens to be that South Africa used the word Hermitage, not sin salt. But, you know, from that, that's how we got Pinotage. So I think Pinotage needs to be celebrated more than it is outside of South Africa because it's like, it's innovation in wine. This is like such a curious blend of grapes to make such a spectacular and, you know, different um, varietal that more people need to be excited about it, first of all, and more people need to be going out and trying it. There is a Pinotage festival in South Africa where they get all these little, um, you know, wineries with Pinotage to come and just express the people and make acts and make it accessible to people to go and try what is proudly South African to them. And I'm so happy that here at our very own Kayan Country Club, we have access to a Pinotage from a very committed and a very, you know, a winery that is really out here to make amazing wine that is intentional in what they do and is spreading the message that Pinotage is a good wine and Pinotage is a reflection of Africa, is a reflection of what we can do and an expression of where winemaking is going. Yes. So the logo of Cannon Corp is, you know, a, a cannon on top of a hill with like, I'm going to say those are fireworks in the background. 
and it's like a celebration. Now I look at the logo, I get excited, and I'm like, you know what? This is like victory. This is like success. This is like we made it on top of the mountain. We're here. Let's have a good time and let's have some really nice wine as we're at it. So Canon Cop wins accolades in like all sorts of wine judgment categories, and it's so special that they've actually made like sort of a ranking for Pinotage. In other words, Pinotage has its own classification and judgment scheme. And that just goes to show that the, the wine industry is really changing. The wine industry is going towards like celebrating and experimenting and producing product that didn't exist like 100, 200 years back. And also like for me as a budding winemaker, that makes me curious to and you know excited about the future possibilities and also makes me that gives me confidence to know that also even though Kenya is not necessarily a wine growing country, there is potential for me because South Africa is still relatively new relatively new in the wine scene and they're making great things. On that note, let us try the Canon Cup Pinot Touch. Cheers. Um, I will note that this is like a very vivid red color wine. Like it's like intense, you know, like sexy and intense and like smoky. And I'm honestly, I'm really privileged that I get to try this today. And I'm so excited. So on the nose, it's like light. It's like um, white pepper, black pepper, some oak, some vanilla. And it's also got how, like, like fruit, like imagine like mixed berry juice for, that's not a great example, but that's what it's reminding me of. So I know it has raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, um, strawberries, like that sort of tropical forest berry, like the red ripe fruits. So this wine has like mild tannins. So the tannins on this Pinotage aren't extremely bold, they're like more velvety and smooth. And the question I get asked a lot is, or like an, a presumption I find with people when I talk, engage them about wine is that tannins and dryness is the same thing. It is not. When I describe a wine as having um, strong or bold tannins, what I'm saying is that when you have a sip of it, it dries out your mouth. If it's really bold, it'll be like, bam, like you have a sip, your mouth is super dry. If it's medium or light, they'll be like, your mouth will dry out, but it won't be like, like you won't feel at the end of it. So with this one, I'll, I'll definitely say that the tannings are medium because there are some pinotages that are like, you have a sip, you're like, I need a glass of water immediately. But this is like, it's, it's luxurious. It's like, I can taste the pinotage, like the strength, the chocolate, the oak, the pepper, the cinnamon the sandalwood in it and the tannins, I can really feel that this is a grape that is truly Pinotage South African style, 100%. So this Pinotage is super delicious. It's like, it's velvety, it's like, it's bold, it tastes amazing. And I would recommend that you have this with food, perhaps a steak or with duck. I know Kaya Country Club offers those meals on the menu. Or I know on Sundays, they have the curry Sundays. This would go very well with like, just yes, Indian food because it's like it's got that spiciness. I know spiciness in wine can put you off, but it's not like eating pilau, right? It's like um, how do I? It's how do I describe? It's like a it's a sensation in your mouth that you have a sip of the wine and you can tell there's like complexity and layers behind it. So next time you're at Kanye Country Club, I do recommend if you're out with family or with friends or by yourself, you. Try something new, try something curious and definitely go for this Pinotage. You will not be disappointed and I guarantee you it tastes like 11 out of 10. So with that brief introduction, I really hope I've gotten you guys on this Pinotage train and that I've inspired you to try out some purely, truly, 100%, you know, born, bred, made, celebrated in Africa varietal. And with that, let's move on to our lovely MCC for today. We're going to have a Graham Beck Brut um, sparkling wine. It is a Method Cap Classic. And what that means is that this is a sparkling wine made in the French style, but made in South Africa. MCC is like 
truly like the same way Pinot Chaji is like South Africa. This is also South African, you know, born bread and we're proud of it and I'm very happy it comes from our darling continent. So first things first, I will make a note that sparkling wine bottles tend to be big, like wider and heavier because of the amount of pressure in the bottle, which makes sense given that there's a lot of carbonation and like fermentation that happens within here. So if if you ever go out and if, if you've ever if you have ever wondered why they are big and heavy and have like a dip, it's because of pressure. It's a fun party note for you. So the difference between MCC and sparkling wine, sorry, MCC and you know champagne is just because you can't legally you cannot call a wine champagne if it is not made in Champagne in France. But it's essentially the same grapes. It is Chardonnay and Pinot Noir majority, maj in majority, and then a bunch of other fewer or smaller percentage grapes. So how MCC is made is that the grapes are crushed. And also as you open sparkling wine, just always note that they, when you get a bottle, the trick is to get like a small hat as you open. So I should have shown this earlier, I'm sorry. But there'll always be like a little tag on the side near the top of the bottle that you just pull and it'll come out seamlessly as such and you'll be left with a small, you know, cute hat. So next time you go to a party, a wedding, or if you're just feeling nice on like a Thursday afternoon, or find your champagne like that or your sparkling wine like that and it'll just be easier than like, you know, trying to tear it around. So MCC is made like um, exactly like champagne. So the, the grapes are harvested, they're crushed very gently into a cuvee and then, which is like juice. So the cuvee is put in stainless steel tanks and then it's fermented. That happens after it's fermented, they're put into bottles, this one right here, and then yeast is added. Yeah, so the yeast is put in the bottle for secondary fermentation and there's no like seriously to say this. After it's fermented in bottle, what happens is like they're put in like an angle and like they twist it like one degree, like so tiny little bits, little bits until all the sediment that remains from fermentation moves from the bottle of the bot <laughs> the bottom of the bottle to the top. Just think like if you have jam and you or, or ketchup, you're trying to get it out. Now for sparkling wine, you can't go around and like hit the bottle to the front. So they just very gently twist it in a process called riddling and eventually because of gravity, it'll all the sediment, sed sediment will sink to the neck from here. And then what happens is that it'll sit here very nicely, then it'll be frozen in like a super cold chiller. And the point of that is um, because you can't really open it and sieve out the sediment, so what they do is that they'll freeze it and then they'll like slice it off. Once they slice it off, of course, the bottle has less alcohol in it. So they add a dosage and dosage is a mix. How do I say? Because you've taken out some, you have to put some back, right? So the, the science and like the winemaking behind how to mix a dosage, how much sugar, how much alcohol, how much like that is a very technical bit. I will not get into that. They add some back and then they put the cork in, they put the cage on top, they wrap it really nicely and then you can enjoy it which is what we're going to do. Now, a trick to opening sparkling wine or champagne is that you just have to have confidence as you open the bottle. So we have the cage. So what you do is you hold it and you twist it really slowly and it'll pop like that. And, you know, sometimes bubbling is not that ideal, but it means that the wine isn't flat and that means we can be a thousand percent certain that Graham Breck, Beck does not dish out wine that is not fantastic and Kayan Club does an excellent job at storing the MCCs. First things first, the cork is in stellar condition. You know, again, emphasizing that this, this winery, this Graham Beck winery really takes time and effort and like, you know, how do I say this? It's intentional in the products they use in the, and in how they package their wine. I might keep this because it looks nice and it'll go very well in my collection. But the first thing that hit me, aside from, you know, sparkling wine, was the smell of Chardonnay, like nutty, raspberries, fresh, oak. You can smell some little Pinot Noir in like some 
like strawberries coming out. Like this is a celebration drink. This is like a wedding wine that you have. This is for happy days. This is for when you win golf. This is for when you like you're just having a great day. This is what you want to have. Even if you're not having such a great day, this is what you deserve to make yourself feel better and remind yourself that not everything is serious all the time. So let's taste this. Oh, look at that. Fantastic! Let's all take a moment to appreciate that the effervescence on this is... I'm, I'm so happy. It's sublime. Can you see the nice bubbles coming up? Um, I'm yet to encounter an MCC from South Africa that has weak effervescence, but if that were the case, I would be super sad. But, I don't know, for me, this is a very beautiful drink. This is elegant. This is, you know, romantic. This is passion. This is such a happy beverage, and I'm so happy and so humble that I get to try it today. So cheers, I hope you have some MCC in your week this week. This is like my sparkling wine dance. <laughs> so it's, it tastes like white chocolate and raspberries. Um, the effervescence is very smooth. So what I mean by that is when you taste it, you can still feel the bubbles in your mouth and they're like, how do I say? You can you can tell it's a lot, but it's also very supple, su subtle. It's like velvety and smooth and like caressing. Um, it also has that punch from a Pinot Noir and that Chardonnay, and that it's still got some like like lemon, like South African yellow lemon acidity in it, and it's very refreshing. That's the word that you used to describe this wine. Yeah, refreshing. This is definitely a wine I recommend that you have for like brunch or when you're out with your, with your mates. Kind nights, I will speak this at you. Not every day, Jägermeister. Let's just pandish a bit a little bit and let's have some MCC when we come to Sundowner. See how luxurious I'm looking out here. You know, golf course, sunset. Not every day. Let's have a shot, guys. We can, we can do better and we deserve better. Yeah, but all in all, this is a very elegant wine and... Just when you're here next and you're looking for that special oomph for a birthday, a graduation, you know, post-quarantine celebration, I recommend that you have this because it is refreshing and it will just brighten up your day. And that ties to this week's South African current wine hour. I hope you had a lot of fun. I really did. And I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Well, Mukami, thank you so much for taking us through South African wines. Members, I hope you've learned something new. As usual, all our episodes are not the same. We come up with different wines, different regions, and different countries. Please feel free to reach us on our social platforms. You can also reach us on our hashtag Karen Wine Hour. We'll be more than happy to take your suggestions and your comments as well. The wines are sold in the club. You can either order for it or do a takeaway. Otherwise, See you next time for our episode 7. Please watch out because it's bigger and better. Mukami, thank you so much for today. <laughs>